Halloween's just a few weeks away and it got me thinking. There's plenty of great horror games to help you get in the Halloween spirit, but are there any good RPGs that might do the same? It turns out that there are. Some are more horror themed, some have a great moody atmosphere, and some are just straight up based around Halloween. So in today's video, I'll be sharing seven great RPGs to help you get in the Halloween spirit. And if you like RPG content like this, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. To kick things off, let's start with the most obvious entry, Costume Quest. Costume Quest is set entirely on Halloween night in which you dress up in costumes, collect candy, and fight monsters. The main setup is that your sibling's been kidnapped by monsters and you need to go rescue them. Thankfully, you have the help of your neighborhood friends and the costumes that you wear. When you get into battles, you'll actually transform into more powerful versions of whatever costume you have on. This could be anything from a unicorn, a robot, or even a ninja. The battles are turn-based with action button prompts to keep you engaged. Candy is the main collectible and currency in the game which encourages you to trick-or-treat at every house and shake every jack-o'-lantern. No matter which of the three areas you're exploring though, Costume Quest is wonderfully atmospheric and sets the Halloween vibe perfectly. If you want to get in the Halloween spirit but don't really want to scare yourself, you can't go wrong with Costume Quest. And if you want even more Halloween RPG goodness, then Costume Quest 2 is waiting for you. I'll be honest, there really isn't all that much different, but if you can't get enough of Costume Quest, then there's plenty to like here. There's some new moody environments, more costumes, and of course, even more candy. One area that did see some big changes was the combat, employing a rock, paper, scissors-like element system with some defensive button props and even a card system. One nice thing about both Costume Quest games is that they're both pretty short and even right now pretty cheap. You can easily finish both with a combined time of around 15 hours or less. So if you're wanting to get in the Halloween spirit but don't want to spend too much time, then Costume Quest 1 and 2 might just be perfect for you. Folklore is one of PS3's best hidden gems and the perfect RPG to get you in the mood for Halloween. In Folklore, you'll split your time between two characters, Ellen and Keats. Ellen receives a letter from her supposedly deceased mother telling her to go to the quaint village of Dulin. Keats, a journalist that covers the paranormal, gets a strange phone call telling him to visit the very same village. Once the two meet up, the game falls into a fairly regular formula. You'll investigate the town trying to unravel its mystery through adventure-like segments, and then travel to the bizarre realm known as the Netherworld. The Netherworld is essentially a series of dungeons where you'll capture monsters to fight on your behalf, and then the dungeon eventually culminates in a boss fight. I think what makes Folklore a great RPG to play during Halloween like most games on this list is its atmosphere. During the investigation segments, they're very slow in plotting, which helps you as the player marinate on the mystery behind this village. It's mainly you walking around desolate environments to moody music. On paper, this probably sounds boring, but when you're playing, you get super invested. I know we're on the precipice of a new console generation, but if you still have your PS3, be sure to dust it off and give Folklore a try. Despite being over 20 years old, Parasite Eve can still set a pretty spooky and moody atmosphere. I mean, the opening of the game has an entire theater burst into flames. It's pretty horrifying. Throughout most of the game, it's fairly slow paced and you're thrown into some pretty eerie environments like a dark sewer, empty buildings, and Central Park at night. The atmosphere is enhanced even further thanks to the masterful Yoko Shimomura score. Seriously, try to listen to this music in a dark room and not get scared. On top of being spooky, it's a pretty great RPG to boot. Combat is a mix of real-time and turn-based combat in which you can move around the battlefield and then pause to input commands. As you level up, you're given points so you're able to build the main character Aya Brea however you want. This includes anything from increasing your item capacity to different gear attributes. And much like Costume Quest 1 and 2, Parasite Eve is fairly short and can easily be knocked out in a weekend. Kingdom Hearts 2 probably sounds like an odd choice, and honestly it probably is, but I wanted to include it for one reason, The Nightmare Before Christmas World. The film is one of the greatest Halloween-themed movies of all time, and nowhere do you get to explore its world and game form like you can in Kingdom Hearts 2. Much like the film, you split your time between Halloween Town and Christmas Town, and are aided in combat by the iconic Jack Skellington. Like most worlds in Kingdom Hearts, you're also given new costumes for Sora, Donald, and Goofy, which are all pretty cool. Also, is there a song any more fitting for the season than This Is Halloween? It's pretty incredible. I realize this is only a small portion of the game as a whole, but I think it's worth booting up Kingdom Hearts 2 for this world alone. None of the games on this list have been true horror, but things really get kicked up a notch now with Shadow Hearts. 
The game's set between 1913 and 1914, in which you'll travel across China and Europe fighting all kinds of foul beasts, demons, and ghouls. The locations all feel straight out of a horror game too, like desolate buildings, haunting ruins, and a bloody train. Shadow Hearts borrows elements from Lovecraftian lore like Sanity, which bleed directly into gameplay with a particular meter. Throughout combat you have Sanity points and they'll slowly deplete as you fight, and if they ever reach zero, your character goes berserk and you can't control them, so this will be something to keep an eye on throughout your playthrough. There is also of course the iconic Judgment Ring, which again is a lot like Legend of Dragoon, in which there's time button presses, but this time you can actually see them coming, so they're a little bit easier to do. There are so few horror themed RPGs out there, so if you're looking for a few true spooks, then definitely check out Shadow Hearts. Now if you like Shadow Hearts and want to check out its PS1 predecessor, then Kodelka is for you. The game takes place in the 1890s and you play as a psychic appropriately named Kodelka. She's investigating a monastery turned mansion and it turns out there's more than a few monsters infesting its halls. Throughout the game's 12 hour runtime, you'll explore the mansion and discover the mystery behind the monsters lurking about. Kodelka feels like if Resident Evil was an RPG, including the static camera that earlier games were known for and some excellent pre-rendered backgrounds. Kudelka definitely shows its age, but I feel like it manages to create a surprisingly spooky atmosphere. Throughout the mansion you'll make your way through dim rooms, torchlit hallways, and dank basements. Unlike Resident Evil, however, you'll fight ghastly beasts in turn-based combat via a grid-based map. I feel like this is perfect for someone who wants to experience the atmosphere of a horror game without having to deal with the frantic gameplay that typically comes with one. I totally understand Kudelka's age might turn some people away, but if you can put up with it, it's a great RPG to play during the Halloween season. Last but certainly not least, we couldn't have finished this video without including Bloodborne. Not only does it create a truly haunting atmosphere, but it includes some terrifying monsters. Whether you're walking through the disheveled streets of Yarnum, exploring the creepy forbidden woods, or investigating the imposing Kanehurst Castle, Bloodborne has all the great environmental hallmarks you'd expect from a horror game. It also has all the classic monsters as well. You have werewolves, ghosts, aliens, and whatever this is. I think one of the best things about Bloodborne is that you can actually fight back against the horrifying beasts you encounter. In most horror games, you run away or have very limited ways to fight back, but in Bloodborne, you can face your fears head on. On top of being an excellent game for the Halloween season, it's an excellent game in its own right. It has some of the best combat in any action RPG, a huge world to explore, and some pretty incredible lore for those willing to dig into it. If you're willing to deal with a bit of a challenge, then Bloodborne should be the perfect RPG to get you in the Halloween spirit. Now if you've got some of your own suggestions that I may have missed, definitely leave them in the comments below. And to watch more, check out some of my latest videos that YouTube thinks you'll really love. And if you made it this far in the video and want even more videos like this, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.